Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Rosie and I graduated from the University of Oxford in 2019 and in September I'm going to be starting a master's course at Cranfield University, so stick around for some uni vlogs. In today's video I'm going to be throwing it back to my undergrad and talking you through an A to Z of some weird Oxford jargon. This might be just interesting to you and a little bit strange and you just want to find out or it might be useful for you if you are starting there. These words were all pretty much brand new to me when I started, obviously some of them won't be but they're a little strange. So we're going to go through them and the format for this video I've tried to make a little bit fun as opposed to just saying it at you and it's sort of taken inspiration from a TikTok trend. If you get it, great. If not, it really doesn't matter, so. A is for Ashmolean or Ashmo. The Ashmolean Museum is one of my favorite places in Oxford. It is actually the oldest museum in the country and if you are an Arcanant student or anyone doing classical archeology span and ancient history, it is very likely that you will spend a lot of your time here. <laughs> Chances are some of your lessons or your tutorials are here and I for one know that I had practical lessons in there and just like to spend my free time walking around and studying in here. There are benches that you can study on, no tables, but if you do want to work elsewhere than your room or the library, this is somewhere to go. B is for- I actually have four words for B and that is battles, blue, bod and bumps. Battles are basically your bills, so every term you pay your battles, this will include your accommodation if you're living in college-owned accommodation, JCR membership fees, charity payments, anything that your college requests of you and money every term. It might even include like a food budget, but not every college does that, so you'd have to look that one up. A blue is like an award given to a sports person who has won their varsity match against Cambridge. You can get full blues in a lot of sports and only half blues in other sports. Bod is the shortened word given to the Bodleian Library, which is this lovely library. It is our main university library and contains one of the oldest libraries in the country. It is also home to a copy of every single book ever published. Ever? They're not all kept on site though there is an off-site depository in Swindon but you can go here and you can work here. It is a reference library though so you can't take the books out. Now bumps is a type of rowing which I'm pretty sure is only done in Oxford and Cambridge but the premise is you row down the river but the rivers aren't wide enough for everyone to go next to each other because it's all against colleges and because of that you have to basically do a qualifier and then you're put in a starting order and the aim is to bump into the boat in front of you or overtake them, overtake their oars and that counts as a bump too. And that makes you go up a place in the rankings. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot bops. Bops are every two weeks usually I think in most colleges and they basically are a big party that you have in college or in a specific place. Some colleges hire out clubs and you can get really cheap alcohol if you want it, dance to the DJs, which is usually your friends, and they're just, they're great fun. C is for crew dates. Oh, crew dates. Crew dating is a tradition at Oxford where you go out with a sports team or with a group of mates. You generally sit boy, girl, boy, girl, I know it's ridiculous, and drink a lot of wine if you want to. You don't have to. Collections is another one beginning with C, which is less entertaining. Collections are simply your mock exams taken at the start of every term. A master's collection is another one that you have, but that doesn't involve taking an exam. It just involves going for almost like a weird little parents' evening with the head of the college and your tutors. It's very surreal, you have to wear your gown as well. Some other C words include cuppers, which is an inter-college sports match which happens within every sport once a year. Commoners, which is this type of gown which I had for the whole thing. If you're a commoner it basically just means that you got a 2-1 or below in all of your exams because if you get a first you get what's called a scholar's gown. A crosskeys, which is the Peters College drink and I think it's the best college drink going, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not biased. If you ask for the grapefruit one, make sure you remember that it is called the Hodge. I know for a fact that it was brought in by my bar team because I ran a competition in order to bring in a new cross keys and my good friend Hannah Hodges was the creator of this drink. It is therefore called The Hodge and the current brushers think it's just called a grapefruit cross keys when in fact 
it has a very specific name. So if you're going to Peter's, remember to call it a Hodge and correct the second years if they say it wrong. And finally we have Cowley. This is where a lot of second years live and there's also two nightclubs there, the O2 and the Bullingdon. Wait, no, there's three. There's Cafe Barba. Cafe Barba should have been one of my C's. Go. It's incredible. It's like reggaeton and Latina music. D is for Dean. The Dean is someone you don't want to be called into a meeting with. They're basically the disciplinary person in the college and they will deal with any form of punishment <laughs> or otherwise that you don't want. E is for Eights. Eights is the summer version of the bumps racing. You know, I said there was two a year. That is the summer one. It's so much fun and there's always like a big dinner afterwards, a club night and basically everyone goes to the side of the river to cheer their friends on and there's pims and champagne and it's great fun. Ents is a word that I didn't understand for a very long time. It took me almost a term to realise that ents is short for entertainments. Entertainments in Oxford is always written as ents anywhere you look for it. F is for finals. <sighs> Finals are the final exams that you take at Oxford and it's usually the case that your entire degree or at least 70% of your degree rests on these exams. Equally, finalists are people who are taking their final exams. So you might be a fourth year, you might be a third year, but you're taking your final exams. Families at Oxford are a thing which you won't expect, but it's just basically like a mentoring bubble. You could have a mum, a dad, a sister, a child, if you're in second year or third year, and they just become kind of a close-knit support network. So you can ask your parents for essays that they've written or welfare advice, and you do the same for your children. If you hear the term FHS, that just means final honour school, and essentially it's after first year, you are then in final honour school. So you have to pass first year to get into FHS. G is for Gloucester Green. Gloucester Green is so underappreciated. They have a market, I think like four times a week that has really cheap fruit and veg. They also have a full on food market that has like street food from across the world and it's amazing and you should go. G is also for G and D's, not that I have ever actually been since Unique, <laughs> but it's an ice cream parlor that's open till midnight, I think every day. So you can go and work there as well and get your ice cream in as a midnight snack if you want it. H is for Hillary. Hillary is the name of the second term at Oxford. A hack is also one beginning with H and a hack is basically someone that is involved with student politics or the Oxford Union and they tend to try and get you to vote for them. Halfway Hall is also something that happens in Oxford beginning with H and it's just a dinner that happens halfway through your degree. I is for Isis. No, not that type of Isis. The Isis is the river that is that flows through Oxford. It is a section of the Thames that for some reason is known as the Isis. There will be a reason, I'm just not entirely sure. You do all the rowing races on there. You'll train there for rowing, most likely. J is for JCR. JCR stands for Junior Common Room. It can mean the student body, the undergraduate student body, as in once you are an undergraduate at Oxford, you are part of the Junior Common Room that student body, you can vote in college politics. And junior common room also is the physical space that is your common room for the undergraduates. K is for KA. I didn't know what this was until third year. It's a pub, it stands for King's Arms. A lot of people seem to abbreviate it to KA. So if that's what you hear, it's the King's Arms pub and it is right next to the Bodleian Library. It's quite expensive and usually very busy. K could also stand for Kings as it is very unlikely that you won't meet someone who went to King's College Wimbledon. L is for a long vacation, AKA summer, AKA the time you are meant to write projects and your dissertation and do internships and not relax. M is for Michaelmas. Michaelmas is the name of the first term at Oxford University. M also stands for May Day, Matriculation and Mods. <laughs> May Day is a yearly celebration at Oxford. There's all sorts of stuff going on in the day with the town and it is the biggest night out of the year. I only went once to be honest, it's a bit overhyped, but basically the clubs are open all night instead of until three. 
Um, people stay up all night because they have the choir singing on Maudlin College Spire at like 6am. Again, I've never seen that. Matriculation is this event and it just means the official day you become part of the university. It is after first week, so you have one week of actual uni, then you sign a big book and have a Latin celebration and wear all of this shebang. Mods, unfortunately, are not very nice. They're the name given to the first year exams. Actually, it's not just the first year exams. Mine were called mods and law students are called mods as well. I think classics people have mods in second year. I don't really understand why the difference is there. I think some of it is historical because for some people mods counts to their degree whereas mine didn't. So I think that's just a historical thing. N is for North Week, not to be confused with North Week, which isn't a thing. I really, really thought that people were saying North Week for a good two weeks. I personally had been calling North Week Zeroth Week, which is not English. So maybe learn from that. N is also for Norrington Table. It's basically like an Oxford League table. No one really pays attention to it. O is for Oxford SU. It's just the student union. You can end up working there if you want to. Unlike other universities, Oxford Student Union isn't like an event space because every college is individual and all has pretty much their own bars and space anyway. So there isn't a, a uni-wide one. P is for plush, punting, pangos, porters, prelims, pidge, and peddying. Whew. Plush is the local LGBTQ kind of club space. They have events there in the evenings. I think Tuesday evening is like their big night, although I've not actually been since it's moved into the new space, which used to be Purple Turtle, which I nearly did as my pee and then realized it no longer exists. Punting is this, it's great fun in the summer. A lot of colleges have their own free punt, so don't waste money buying one if you can use the free one. Pango is the college drink at Hartford, would recommend. It's also great, though not as good as the cross cave. Pennying is something that I'm pretty sure all the unis do as well. You just throw a penny into someone's drink. If it lands in the drink, they have to down it. Prelims are another name for the first year, end of year exams. I think this is the most widely used name, although mine were, like I said, called mods, which I don't really understand. A pidge is short for pigeonhole. It is where you get your mail, your post, and they are usually situated in the Porter's Lodge. Now the Porter's Lodge is like an entrance into college basically, and they are home to the Porters, who are lovely, lovely people who basically look after you, look after the college site, watch the CCTV. I know my college Porters were amazing and they were everyone's friends. They were really, really helpful on nights out, looked out for you, could call a taxi for you if you needed to. I'm not sure what other colleges ones are like. I've had mixed messages from certain colleges, but mostly the porters are great. Q is for quad. A quad is what most colleges have. You walk through a door, there's a square piece of grass that you're probably not allowed to walk on with college rooms or otherwise around the outside. Quad is also a very fancy restaurant in Oxford that you may be able to convince your parents to take you to. I haven't even tried. R is for the Radcam, aka the one thing you will recognise when when you're looking at pictures of Oxford. This is a library, it is only accessible to students of the university. You can look at it if you're a visitor but you can't go in unless you've got a Bodleian card which again I forgot to put on B. A Bod card is your library card for the Bod. Another R word is rustication which is not something you want. A rustication is basically a disciplinary suspension so you have to leave Oxford for a year, you're not allowed back in college for that year. S is for subfuzz, which is the funny clothes that we wear, like this and this. S is also for schools, which can mean examination school, which is this building, or schools might also be the kind of collective name for your department, so you'd have a school's dinner, which means a nice dinner at the end of the year with people from your department. Sconcing also begins with S. It's like a traditional drinking game at Oxford. I don't know how old it is, but you say you have your glass, you kind of tap your glass and then you say, I sconce anyone who, if they've done it, they have to drink. It's like never have I ever. S is also the scout. Now a scout is like a cleaner or a housekeeper in Oxford. They clean the communal areas maybe once a week, perhaps more. They collect your bins every day. Be nice to the scouts, you know, it is their job, but 
if you're gonna be a slob and gross and just generally ungrateful, that is not kind. Be nice to them. Sending down is again not something you would want to happen to you, it basically means getting kicked out of the university for disciplinary reasons. T is for Trinity, aka the best term at Oxford, hands down. This is the summer term, so many things happen this term, like all the punting happens and a lot of pims seems to happen in Trinity. I'd never had pims before Oxford. Garden plays happen in Trinity term, summer eights happens in Trinity term, and your exams, but we'll just skip over that one. T is also for toots, tabs, and torpids. Now a toot is just the quick way of saying tutorial, it's your one-to-one, -one, one to two, one to three lessons with your tutor to discuss essays, problem sheets, or just anything really. A tab is someone from Cambridge. It is short for Canterbrigian, which is the Anglo-Saxon name for someone from Cambridge. So Canterbrigia or Canterbrigi is the Anglo-Saxon name for Cambridge. So that became tabs, can tab, tab. That's the name of people who go to Cambridge Uni. I don't know if they've got a word for people who go to Oxford, but if you know, please let me know. Torpids is the name of the bumps race that happens in Hillary term. It's normally freezing and quite often gets snowed off. U is for Union, the Oxford Union. This is not the student union. This is a completely separate organization, pretty much run by the students. The union president ends up often in very high places in politics or law. I'm just gonna put a list here of previous Oxford Union presidents and you can judge that for yourself. V is for that which is the shortened version of vacation, which if I quote one of the tutors in my freshest week means very specifically, simply a time when you are working away from Oxford. It is not a holiday. Varsity also begins with B. It is the sports matches that are played between Oxford and Cambridge and also Oxford and Oxford Brooks. Varsity is also one of the like ENTS companies in Oxford. If anyone on Facebook adds you with VE in their name, don't accept it because they'll just try and get you to pay money to go to events. Varsity Events does however run the ski trip every year. I don't know if that'll happen in 2020, but I think actually I think it's happening later in the year. Either way, it is like a trip that happens between Oxford and Cambridge every single year. I've never been because it's really expensive, but Apparently it's a lot of fun. W is for Woodstock. Woodstock is a festival that happens at Wadham College every year and it is, I'm pretty sure, for like LGBTQ uh, awareness and raising money for that. I've never actually been, but it's supposed to be great. is for the X5, the bus that I'm gonna have to take between Cranfield and Oxford, and I'm not looking forward to because I've heard terrible things about it. It is the bus that goes between Oxford and Cambridge, and it also, I think, stops in Milton Keynes, which is where I've got to get it from. Y is for year abroad. If you do a language, you will be going a year abroad. You also can do a term abroad with Erasmus, or simply if you've arranged it with another university and can convince your department that it will help your degree course. Z is for Zooniverse, something that I hadn't heard of and thought was a film until I was researching this video, but I really needed a Z and apparently Zooniverse is an online research platform that was started by Oxford. It is accessible to everyone and I think anyone can submit research as well, so maybe it'll help with your preparing for Oxford or just simply to find extra articles and things. And that is your Oxford A to Z. That was a lot, wasn't it? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video and found it somewhat informative, at least. <laughs> if you are off to Oxford this year, good luck. I'm hoping to arrange some form of meetup during the year, like once Corona's calmed down, if, if Corona calms down. If you've got any other videos to request, do let me know in the comments and I will see you in my next video. Bye.